Okay, so okay. Oh, so Roxana is going to counteract with the long term. Uh, all right. Well, good. Thank you, Anu. Uh, let me have my last word with uh, with my dear friend, uh, uh, Dr. Waxman. But if I, I would need some slides, although I I can kind of talk about it. Yes. So the idea is that longer is still an option for many. So that's sort of where I'm coming from, and it, very important is the. Uh, Twilight study that I'm running as my biggest, uh, I think, conflict for this talk. And I think the idea here is about the duration of DAPT. And I think these are the four topics that we need to talk about, the safety and efficacy of prolonging DAPT, the trade-off that we already heard, the use of new generation DES in current practice. And I think, uh, Ron, you really covered this. Uh, we can, the two of us can give the exact same talk, but, um, uh, fighting on the different sides of the equation, and, and I think that's what a great debate is. And because it comes down to the last uh, uh, point that one size doesn't fit all, as uh, you, you described with the use of the risk scores, and the prolonged duration can't be completely eliminated because many will still need it. And, and let's see if I can fight that argument for you. So you already talked to us about the safety and efficacy of prolonged DAPT. A lot of this comes from this particular study. I think it's important to understand the context of the DAPT study, which really was in patients who tolerated things well for a whole year. And the question was, is there a benefit of extending DAPT beyond a year? And when you did, after you got um, you weeded out sort of the survival of the fittest, the people who got through the one year and then you uh, gave them another year, you were able to reduce stent thrombosis, myocardial infarction, uh, and overall MACE. Mortality was in the wrong direction and that's where we are all stuck. And a lot of it uh, is important to note, and I think this is the key slide for my talk today, that when you prolong duration of dual antiplatelet therapies, not only are you reducing stent-related complications but in that study, but much more important is about the non-stent-related myocardial infarction, the new lesions, the, the kinds of things that will come down the line. The price is definitely there of increased bleeding, and I think uh, from multiple meta-analyses, we know that if you prolong the duration of DAPT, you will have less stent thrombosis and myocardial infarction, but if you shorten, you will have less bleeding and maybe, maybe even less mortality, and that is that really bleeding-related mortality if you do it right, because this trade-off is so very important. And the trade-off we already calculated that actually if you just applied prolonged DAP to everyone, you will cause extra bleeding, and bleeding matters, and uh, Ron showed that so beautifully, bleeding absolutely matters. It matters. Uh, even more so than um, post-discharge myocardial infarction, especially when it's uh, severe. And the new generation DES definitely have equalized the playing field that now the stent-related complications don't become center stage. In fact, in the DAPT study, if you just look at the Everolimus eluding stents, the, there was a huge, huge, uh, uh, the benefit was not as, as high, and in fact, the mortality was in the wrong direction and statistically significant. So all of this, uh, Ron is like, yeah, I'm the winner of this debate. Well, let's, let's keep going to the next one is that one size does not fit all. The answer is no, because we really do have to think and take into consideration all of these important factors, the kinds of things that are not really measured in clinical trials, like a socioeconomic status, is the patient going to be adherent, um, what's the neurologic status, who's taking care of this patient, and at the end of the day, what are we really treating, the stent or the patient, and I hope the answer is the patient. And we have to think about who are those patients who will get a benefit from prolonged DAPT. And we have a hint of this from the Charisma study that showed those patients at high risk, those with PAD, prior uh, MI, these patients might have this. These are the high atherosclerotic burden patients who might benefit from a dual antiplatelet therapy down the line. And the Pegasus study actually did show that, that if you 
uh, gave these post-MI patients who had high-risk features ticagrelor versus placebo with a background of aspirin at both doses, you were able to reduce uh, death MI CVA, but there was a price of bleeding. So you have to make those distinction. I think it's incredibly interesting, this most recent trial, that I'm surprised Dr. Sharma didn't put in his top 10 because I do believe the COMPASS study is very important in stable CAD and PAD patients who, are, who were randomized to receive aspirin uh, plus 2.5 milligrams of rivaroxaban, rivaroxaban alone for 5 milligrams or aspirin alone. They were followed for three years and there was a major reduction, a stepwise reduction when you added the anticoagulant um, rivaroxaban, the novel direct oral anticoagulant. And look at this. The, these numbers are pretty significant. There was a 24% reduction in the overall cardiovascular death MI and stroke. And take a look of the reduction of the, and you can really see the number of patients who died in the 9,000 patients, 160 versus 203. Death was reduced, stroke was significantly reduced, MI was in the right direction, but death and stroke, two of the most important, I think, uh, issues. Uh, Ron's already shown this, that we have to really, really kind of make an important distinction of the patient's assessment and make those uh, important um, uh, uh, judicious uh, plans. The DAPT score is one way to look at this, and this is not just a thrombotic. This is a net adverse clinical event. These are the patients who could you know, it was both bleeding and ischemic risk in one score. And in this score, if you have a higher DAPT score of greater than two, after the patient has had a full year, you could decide that these patients should maybe stay on a more prolonged uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. Usman Babur developed the Paris risk score, and in that risk score, you could actually choose between, you could see what the bleeding and the coronary thrombosis risk is at the time of PCI and make important distinction. And there are other risk scores, and the precise DAPT is the one that's here and actually incorporated into the European guidelines. It's a great way to rule out bleeding, high bleeding risk patients. Individualizing the treatment is, at the end of the day, the most important thing. And if you take a look here, you see all of those patients who would benefit from a prolonged DAP, most likely. And it's a patient, anatomic, and stent-related factors. And we know who those are. It doesn't really take a genius or a DAP or any kind of a score. It's those patients with acute coronary syndrome, with diabetes, and LV dysfunction, and heart failure, and prior stent thrombosis, PAD, long lesion, multiple stents, small vessels, and of course, very important bifurcation complex stenting. We are uh, moving ahead in, in trying to get rid of that bleeding issue. If you're gonna give a patient a prolonged DAPT, can you drop aspirin to try to preserve the ischemic benefit of the potent agent without causing GI sloughing and GI bleeding? And that is a, a trial that I could never have done without Usman Babur. 9,000 patients enrolled. 7,119 patients randomized. We will share the data next year at this time. Global leaders will be presented at uh, European Society of Cardiology. Here also there is an aspirin withdrawal. So there is this interesting way of trying to evaluate prolonging DAPT in these patients, but without having to uh, give them a um, aspirin included. Let me just conclude by telling you that Ron Waxman is an incredible person. At CRT last year, imagine that it took that long, 40 years of PCI, for Ron Waxman to say, let's perform a case that spotlights women with all women on the panel and all women um, uh, cases, and Dr. Kinney led that. And that is unbelievable. It was like a historic event. It shouldn't have been such a historic event. Thank you, Ron, for having CRT, an incredible, unbelievable ability to be able to meet our uh, wonderful president, Dr. Uh, Mr. Obama. 
But I can't wait until next year. So you are the winner. You always will be the winner until this next uh, year, 2019 CRT, when we'll meet uh, the Prime Minister, Tony Blair. Thank you so much.